Hello and welcome to WaveScan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio. Researched and written in Indianapolis by Adrian Peterson and produced in the studios of WRMI Shortwave in Okeechobee, Florida. I'm Jeff White. Today on WaveScan, in the land of a thousand hills, national radio in Rwanda. The radio scene in the isolated Andaman Islands our Japan DX News from Yukiko Tsuji, and our special QSL of the week is a nostalgic reminder. On this occasion here in Wayscan, we return to the radio scene in the small, landlocked country of Rwanda in Africa. Last weekend, the final broadcasts from Deutsche Welle Kigali were noted by international radio monitors in many countries throughout the world, and this majestic shortwave station has now gone silent. Also silenced at the same time was the national broadcasting system on shortwave in Rwanda, and that is our story for today from Ray Robinson. Thanks, Jeff. The first radio broadcasting station to go on the air for coverage of Rwanda was not located in Rwanda. It was located in neighbouring Burundi, which at the time was linked with Rwanda as a politically double territory. In 1960, Radio Usumbura, located in the joint capital city of Usumbura, was inaugurated with 10 kilowatts on 6195 kHz. In preparation for Rwanda's coming independence, a radio broadcasting service was officially organised on May 19, 1961. Their first transmitter was likely located at the government communication station that had been established in Kigali in 1930. The first known reference to the new radio broadcasting service is found in the Australian magazine Radio and Hobbies for January 1962 in a note from the highly esteemed Arthur Cushin in New Zealand. Arthur Cushion appears to be quoting from another source for this item, perhaps in the United States or maybe in Sweden. Programming from this new shortwave station, it was stated, was in the French language and also in local languages. Perhaps some, if not all, of this radio programming was relayed from the new shortwave station already on the air in neighbouring Usumbura in Burundi. In July 1962, the government of Belgium granted independence to the double unit of Rwanda-Burundi, and Rwanda became a separate independent nation in its own right. At this stage, Germany had already begun work on establishing a shortwave relay station for Deutsche Welle near Kinyinya, some 10 miles north of the now capital city, Kigali. The inaugural broadcast from this new shortwave station in Rwanda took place on August the 30th of the following year, 1963, with the usage of a temporary 600 watt transmitter on 7225 kHz in the mornings and 7295 kHz in the evenings. However, around that same time, a 5 kilowatt transmitter was installed in the same Deutsche Welle facility, and this radiated programming on behalf of Rwanda National Radio on 6050 kHz. And then during the following year, 1964, a 50 kilowatt Philips transmitter, model 8FZ514-01, was installed, and this took over the same shortwave channel in the 49 meter band, which was adjusted to 6055 kilohertz. Programming was produced locally in a studio in the capital city, though Radio Rwanda also relayed daily news bulletins in French from neighboring Radio Burundi. A dozen years later, in 1976, the 5 kilowatt transmitter was reactivated, and this time it was on the tropical band channel 3330 kHz. As time went by, a 20 kilowatt RIS transmitter from Croatia, model OR20K1, was installed in 1984, followed in 1992 by a 100 kilowatt ABB, model SK51F3-2P, apparently operating at half power. For the last decade or so, Radio Rwanda shortwave has been noted on usually just one channel, 6055 kHz. Radio Rwanda has never been on the air on medium wave, though two high-powered medium wave transmitters were planned in the early 1980s, 
100 kilowatts on 1512 kilohertz for Kigali and 50 kilowatts on 1530 kilohertz for Gitirama. Instead, Radio Rwanda continued development of the nationwide network of FM stations, which had begun around the mid-1970s, and abandoned the plans for medium wave. During the time of trouble in Rwanda, the Deutsche Welle Radio Rwanda shortwave station was safeguarded by a two-mile-long wall with metal spears on the top completely surrounding the station, and the approach road was barricaded and mined. On April 13th, 1994, the German staff, seven men, three of their wives and a child, were rescued by two Belgian helicopters, and these personnel were taken to Nairobi in Kenya for safety. At times, during the long-drawn-out era of intertribal fighting, the relay station was sometimes off the air, particularly when the electric power was interrupted. During this era of turmoil, Radio Rwanda was still on the air at times with the usage of a standby generator powering the 20 kilowatt transmitter. However, in all of these tragic events, the station remained undamaged. However, after more than 40 years of on-air service, the Deutsche Welle relay station was closed over the last weekend of March, and thus the broadcast from Radio Rwanda on shortwave also came to an end. At the time, there were five active shortwave transmitters, four at 250 kilowatts and one at 100 kilowatts. These days, the nationwide network for Radio Rwanda is on the air on FM only. This is Radio Rwanda. News in English. Good evening, welcome to this edition of the News in English. I'm Grace Magambo. First Lady Mrs. Jeanette Kagame has called for continuous. Several Rwanda QSL cards of interest are known. The DW card that was issued from their headquarters in Cologne, Germany, showed a map of Africa in yellow, superimposed on a background of strong blue, though other DW cards were also issued to verify the reception of their African relay station, with Kigali written in as the location. The generic Radio Rwanda QSL card shows a bullseye target of circles with no specific QSL details. A Radio Netherlands card verifies their relay via Kigali, and AWR also issued many different types of QSL cards to verify their relay via Kigali, usually with what is now a rare Kigali QSL stamp. We should also mention that AWR established an FM station in Kigali some 10 years ago. The station is installed in the building that serves as the headquarters for the Adventist denomination in Rwanda, and it's located in the Kasiiru sector of Gasabo district in Kigali. This FM station was inaugurated on March 10, 2005, and it can be heard at 106.4 MHz. And before we leave the Rwanda scene, we should mention that Adventist World Radio made two earlier attempts at instigating a relay over the Deutsche Welle shortwave station at Kigali. The first attempt was in mid-1975, when a series of daily half-hour test broadcasts in the Swahili language was scheduled, and the second attempt was two years later. There's no record that the two projected AWR relays via DW Kigali ever went to air, even though the first tapes were delivered to the station. There were unexpected delays in the production of AWR programming in the Swahili language. On the third occasion for an AWR relay via Kigali, the programs were on the air for two and a half hours daily, right up to the recent B14 transmission period, which ended during the last weekend in the month of March, when the station was closed. Thank you, Ray. Ray Robinson there of KVOH. Listening to WaveScan from Adventist World Radio. Send your comments and reception reports to WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, in the United States. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, in the USA. Or you can email us at WaveScan at awr.org Our email once again wavescan at awr.org 
Thank you, Alan Graham. At the beginning of March, an important radio event was held in Port Blair, the capital city of the Andaman Islands. This radio event was a large international amateur radio convention lasting nearly two weeks, and the initial venue was the Hotel Megapode Nest. Hamtech 2015 was held for two days, March 6th and 7th, and the following ten days were given to lectures and presentations about the many varied aspects of amateur radio operating and activity. This event was organized by NIAR, the National Institute of Amateur Radio in Hyderabad, India, and two special call signs were issued for the occasion. VU4A, for foreign amateur radio operators who were visiting for the occasion, and VU4I, for Indian amateur radio operators from the Indian subcontinent. Among the NIAR officials visiting Port Blair for this occasion was Jost Jacob, the U2 JOS, who also provided us with an update on the radio and TV scene in the Andaman Islands. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are a long chain of 572 tropical islands that extend for a distance of some 600 miles, though only 36 are inhabited. They're located in the Bay of Bengal, on the edge of the Indian Ocean and they are a territory belonging to the Republic of India. The total population is a little over one-third of a million, with Port Blair as the capital city and the only city in the entire island cluster. Some of the small primitive tribes living on isolated islands prefer to remain in isolation without any contact with the outside world. Some of these languages have not been identified, and the relationship to other Known languages is, to this day, completely unknown. Port Blair is located on the east coast of South Andaman Island. It is the administrative center for both sections of the island cluster, the Andamans and the Nicobars, and it is developing into a recognized tourist destination. The original inhabitants of the Andaman Islands are aboriginal peoples whose origins and languages are not fully substantiated. It is thought that they arrived more than 2,000 years ago, and until European exploration of Asia and the Pacific took place, they lived in almost complete isolation. Occasional early travelers, such as the famous Marco Polo and others, described the islanders as very primitive, practicing a form of cannibalism. The British came in 1789, and they established a settlement at what is now Port Blair on South Andaman Island. The islands were occupied by the Japanese for two and a half years, beginning in March 1942. The first wireless station in the Andaman Islands was installed by the British in Port Blair just before the beginning of World War I, and it was on the air in Morse code under the call sign ROB. Call signs for early wireless stations in the eastern area of what was Greater India under the British Raj all began with the twin letters RO. After the war, the call was amended to VTP. The first radio broadcasting station installed in Port Blair was a 1-kilowatt medium-wave unit operating on 1440 kilohertz. The transmitter was located in the studio building at suburban Dilanapur, which was built on an 8-acre property on an elevated area. This first transmitter was a Japanese NEC, model number MB-122, and it was officially inaugurated on August 15, 1959. When the medium wave band in Asia and elsewhere was changed from 10 kHz spacing to 9 kHz on November 23, 1978, Port Blair remained on the same 1440 kHz. In 1975, an additional transmitter facility was constructed for All India Radio on a 40-acre property at Brookshabad, 10 miles south from the studio building. Two 10-kilowatt Indian-made transmitters, model HMB-104, were installed, and these were inaugurated on November 6, 1975. The original frequency was 680 kilohertz, and this was modified to 684 kilohertz under the 9 kilohertz spacing in 1984. At this stage, the original 1-kilowatt unit was taken into alternative programming, though subsequently it was in use only for emergency purposes, including as a studio-to-transmitter program link when needed. This unit was removed from service 
and dismantled in November 2004, and it was replaced by an FM transmitter. In order to provide adequate coverage to distant islands in the Andamans and Nicobars, a Japanese 10 kilowatt NEC shortwave transmitter, model HFB7840, was installed with a dipole antenna system beamed north and south. A lengthy series of drawn-out test broadcasts began in September 1988, and it was taken into full service on March 11, 1989. Test frequencies back then were 4760 kHz, 6000 kHz, 7180 kHz, and 9690 kHz. Though 4760 kHz and 7115 kHz became its standard frequencies. Fourteen years later, one of the exciters developed a fault, and the transmitter power was dropped back to 4 kilowatts. A specially made Indian exciter was installed in January of the following year, 2004, and the transmitter power was then increased to 8.5 kilowatts. In 1992, an additional studio building was constructed on the hilltop property adjacent to the older building. The total staff at AIR Port Blair is a little more than 100, and they produce programming in the national and local languages. A new 100-kilowatt medium-wave transmitter manufactured by Talis in Switzerland was commissioned on the same 684 kilohertz channel in May 2003, and the twin 10-kilowatt units were retained for standby usage. A 10-kilowatt Nautel FM transmitter was installed at the studio premises in Dilanapur for direct broadcast of the VB Vivid Bharati network programming during the following year, 2004. During the disastrous earthquake and tsunami of 2005, AIR Port Blair carried special emergency programming when power was not available locally and the station was off the air, a 250-kilowatt shortwave transmitter in Delhi carried special programming beamed to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. You're listening to WaveScan from Adventist World Radio. Let's go to Tokyo now. Here's Yuki Kutsuji with her DX News report for this month. Hello and welcome to the DX Report of the Month from Japan Showtime Club, aided by Toshi Otake, and I'm Yuki Kutsuji. We have several DX reports from our club members this week. One talk radio light from Papua New Guinea was heard on 7325 kHz on March 8th from 0913 to 0934 UTC in English. SIO rating was 343. NBC National News and Gospel Song were on the air. ID was given at 0915. NBC East New Britain from Rabaulu, Papua New Guinea, was heard on 3385 kHz on February 26 from 1114 to 1135 UTC in English. SIO rating was 353. News was aired until 1124, then ID was given, followed by talk program. Solomon Islands Broadcasting Corporation was heard on 5020 kHz on February 26 from 0958 to 1010 UTC in Pigeon. Local music was aired until 10.01, then ID and the news were broadcast. Radio Australia from Shepparton was received on 15415 kHz on March 6 from 2200 to 2300 UTC in English. SIO rating was 454. ABC News was aired, followed by Pacific Beat at 22.05, Australian Country Style at 22.30. Radio Thailand was heard on 9390 kHz on March 6 from 12.30 to 12.58 UTC in English. SIO rating was 353. National news and global news were broadcast. Dengue Kurdistan via Moldova was heard on 9400 kHz on February 28 from 1400 to 1500 UTC in Kurdish. SIO rating was 353. Only local songs were played. Radio Romania International was received on 
15460 kilohertz on February 27th from 1157 with interval signal to the sign off at 1256 UTC in English. SIO rating was 353. Radio newsreel and Terra in the 21st century were broadcast. Finally, Japan Shotoweb Club will issue the QSO cards for the correct reports on our segment of WaveScan program. Our address for your email report is jswcqsl at live.jp. For this edition of DX Report, we would like to thank Mr. Yasuharu Tanabe, Mr. Iwao Nagatani, Mr. Tetsuya Toriyumi, Mr. Masato Tanaka, and Mr. Chiaki Shimada for sharing the information with us. I'm Yukiko Tsuji in Tokyo. Last week on Wayscan, we were unable to bring you our regular Indian DX report from Prithwaj Purkayasta due to our coverage of the cyclone activity in the South Pacific and the radio news related to that. So here now is Prithwaj with his Indian DX report. Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Indian DX report. Today, I would like to share with you some of my recent DX logs which may become useful for your DXing. NHK World Radio Japan Bengali Service was heard with Shinpo 35333 from 13 hour UTC on 11685 kHz. Radio New Zealand International was heard on 9700 kHz around 1315 UTC with Shinpo all three. The Voice Asia via Tashkent, Uzbekistan was heard in Hindi with Shinpo 35333. On 9500 kilohertz around 1310 UTC, T8WH from Palau with their program A Woman's Special Touch was logged around 1315 UTC on 9930 kilohertz with reception simple 34343. Radio Australia relaying from Shepparton in English was heard at 1325 UTC on 12065 kilohertz. With Shinpo 34333, KSDA Agat Guam in Bengali was heard on 15215 kilohertz around 1320 UTC with Shinpo 44444. Radio Riyadh from Saudi Arabia in Bengali was logged on 15120 kilohertz around 13125 UTC. That is 1325 UTC with Shinpo 55444. HCJB radio from Australia was heard with Hindi transmission at 1330 UTC on 11590 kHz with Shinpo 35323 Radio Veritas Asia's Hindi transmission Satyeshwar was heard with nice reception on 11870 kHz from 1330 UTC Bangladesh Betar on 4750 kHz is coming nicely these days during evening Indian hours Radio Thailand in English was heard on 9390 kHz between 14 to 1430 UTC with Shinpo all five KBS World Radio English service was heard on 9640 kHz around 1415 UTC with Shinpo code 34333 Vatican Radio in English was logged with Shinpo 45444 on 11695 kilohertz around 1530 utc voice of islamic republic of iran or irib in english was heard on 11760 kilohertz around 14 sorry 1540 utc with simple 35333 voice of mongolia in english was heard on 12015 kilohertz that is 12015 kilohertz between 1530 to 16 hour utc with simple 35333 adventist world radio with their dx program web scan was heard on 11690 kilohertz between 16 to 1630 utc with simple 44344 radio taiwan international english language transmission via isuden france was heard on 13810 kilohertz between 16 to 17 hour UTC with Shinpo 45444 Radio Filipinas in English was heard around 02 hour UTC with 17700 kHz Shinpo 
Bhutan Broadcasting Service in vernacular language was heard with Sinpo 45444 on 6035 kilohertz between 02 to 03 hour UTC. And friends, with this, I would like to conclude this edition of Indian DX report, and I hope it will be useful to you. For correct reception reports for this edition of IDXR, I will be issuing our special smallest QSLs, which will be world smallest QSLs in size till today. Please send your reception reports and feedback to Indian DX report at the rate gmail dot com. So friends, until next time, it's goodbye and 73s from us all. A couple of weeks back, Jerry Berg in suburban Boston sent us two reception reports on the AWR transmissions from the Deutsche Welle relay station in Kigali, Rwanda, which we were pleased to verify with our special QSL card and QSL stamp in the usual way. Enclosed with his reception reports was a photocopy of a 30-year-old QSL card that verified his reception of an AWR broadcast from another shortwave relay station in Africa. Back in those days, AWR was on the air from Africa Number、no. One, the international shortwave relay station that was located near Moyabi in Gabon. This powerful station contained four transmitters at 500 kilowatts, though at times some of the units were operated at half power, 250 kilowatts. The Jerry Berg QSL card. Was a promotional card printed in green and depicting a map of the world with Africa in the center. The date of reception was September second, nineteen eighty-five. The time was seventeen hundred UTC, and the frequency was nine six three zero kilohertz. And we leave you with some traditional dance music from the Nicobar Islands of India. Thanks for listening to WaveScan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio, researched and written in Indianapolis by Dr. Adrian Peterson. Next week, the Titanic anniversary, Cape Race in Newfoundland, talked to the Titanic. We have our Philippine DX report from Henry Umbarai. And our special QSL of the week will be a very first QSL from a new shortwave station.、A、reminder that we have several QSL cards available. Send your AWR and KSDA reception reports for WaveScan to the AWR address in Indianapolis, and also to the station your radio is tuned to, WRMI or WWCR or KVOH, or to the AWR relay stations that carry WaveScan. Remember too, you can send a reception report to each of the DX reporters when their segment is on the air here in WaveScan, from Japan, Bangladesh, the Philippines, Australia, and India. They will verify with their own colorful QSL card. Return postage and an address label are always appreciated. Our address is WaveScan, Box two nine two three five, Indianapolis, Indiana, four six two two nine, USA. Our email address is wavescan at awr dot org. I'm Jeff White at WRMI in Okeechobee, Florida. Till next week. Good listening, everyone. <laughs>